wrong, but I didn't know enough about it. And right. when they told me about it, you know, in, in my mind, I just automatically thought this was something that happened mad long ago. Right, right, right. And I'm like, well, this was 36 years ago? I'm going to have to write another book. Good morning, good afternoon, y'all. Good evening. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Um, you know, I, I listened to the Breakfast Club today, and I saw... Um, one of the Africa offsprings uh, from the move. Um, let's see, Ramona Africa, John Africa. I mean, it's it, uh, Delbert Africa. I can't remember who he said he was an offspring of. However, that's neither here nor there. What I wanted to talk about is why I do believe that um, anytime any group comes up um, and display self-sufficiency in terms of how they and reject American culture, especially if they're black, um, then you, you're going to have a problem because um, that's not, that's too far off the uh, grid. And so for people like David Koresh, and I'm not trying to any way compare Delbert Africa and them to them but what I am comparing is the fact that black people that was along Osage Avenue at that time was also having a problem. They were going to the city hall. Because I remember I worked um, not for the Philadelphia uh, uh, of vector control, but I, 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 as a city worker, that was some of the stuff that you knew that... Um, they were having, um, you know, problems with in terms of neighborhood watch, neighborhood groups. The neighbors went to City Hall. And I think who did a very good expose of that was, ooh, I don't know if it was Leslie Stahl, but it was so long ago. It was on it's a PBS special. Um, and I thought that it was very, it, that was 20-something years ago. But they broke, moved down, and I think that was a better document probably than what you're going to see anything nowadays because right then it was right when it was happening and you were talking to the players right then as they were young, like Ramona Africa and, you know, Delbert Africa. So what happened was it was neighbors that helped that situation um, and moved it and make it any better by eating the raw meat and throwing the carcasses and things and stuff outside the compound, which made it a health hazard. So you have people that are living totally off the grid inside of a neighborhood that was pretty conformed. And then they constructed this bullhorn up on the third floor. And when some of their comrades had got put in jail, they were on this uh, bullhorn like 24-7. And the people, not being fair to the residents that lived in the neighborhood. I'm just giving y'all another story, another side of what that was all about. Because I don't know if any of those players are still alive. I don't know if any of the people that objected and that whole city hall Oh, that was filled with neighbors from Osage Avenue that went down there complaining against the move. I don't know if any of them are still alive uh, and willing to um, tell their story about from their perspective because of probably the backlash. Um, a lot of people blame the neighborhood. But at some point, you you it, it brings back to question, what happens if you have a house that moves into your quiet neighborhood they found a big three-story a house and they began to live naturally off the land and it wasn't so much that they had dreadlocks you know they were like i said they were eating the raw meat there was a lot of um uh, chickens and stuff being slaughtered just a lot of things that that was part of living naturally 
but not part of living in a zoned out district for a neighborhood. And I think that when you start talking about the move, it's very delicate. Because while I do believe that everybody should have the right to exercise their freedom of speech and the freedom of expression, at some point, the move have to take responsibility for disturbing all the homeowners that were black like them on Osage Avenue who had nothing to do with their political prisoners, but they said they would put pressure on them so they would go down there and put pressure on City Hall so, in other words, they can have their uh, political uh, um, leaders put out of jail. I think that was very unfair. I think it was very selfish. Um, at least that's the way Ramona Africa uh, described it. She said they would, they welcomed them to call the police. They welcomed them to go down to City Hall because they felt that if they would put pressure on their neighbors about a situation that the neighbors had nothing to do with, didn't probably want to take part in, you have freedom and free will of religion and all those things. You can't force people to get with your way of eating, living, and thinking, and then trash them out and do those things to them when they look like you because they don't want to follow you. And that's why I have a problem with um, glorifying what happened. Yes, it was a travesty. It was just like Black Wall Street. The damn government dropped E4 freaking bombs on a residential neighborhood and it burned for six blocks. I mean, neighbors, homes burnt out. The mayor blamed the police chief. The police chief, uh, uh, the, the, the mayor told the police chief not to do it. The police chief did it, then blamed it on the mayor. You had a black mayor at that time. It was just a mess. A bona fide mess. It was a mess. So for those of y'all who don't remember what happened back then, if you're not alive, uh, or weren't alive, barely born, I'd like to really hear some comments from some of my older subscribers that remember what happened over there on Old Sage Avenue. Please leave your comments, because I really would like to do something live about this. I want y'all to leave your comment, because... I don't want y'all to believe a false narrative about what happened with the move because every group that considers themselves revolutionary is not something that you, I mean, you would have the free will to whether you want to follow them or not. Maybe you don't believe in eating raw meat. Maybe you don't believe in having your uh, children or one of them not taking baths. Um, and maybe you don't, um, that's not what you subscribe to. You should have the free will to reject that type of propaganda. And that's what the uh, neighbors did on Osage Avenue. And they went down there and complained to the city hall. Well, hell, because they complained, they had their whole neighborhood blown up. <laughs> that's about the size of it. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's damn pitiful. They went down there... <laughs> to complain about these or people who have constructed bullhorns and shit on top of their house and start screaming 24 hours a day. It was like living in Russia where you hear somebody talking all day long on a bullhorn. All that shit all day long. And that's what they did to those residents. And they couldn't take no more. They had ropes. They would, they would uh, jump up and climb up the ropes to the front of the house. Look, I had friends who had foot. Listen, I, I'm telling y'all, it was not a nice time. I remember the time very well, okay? And I had a couple of friends, again, like I said, that lived in Philly. This is crazy. And I just don't want a false narrative to come uh, out about the move. Because there were too many organizations that told the line in a way that's, that was more, um, how should I say? I don't want to say more normal. I would just say more appealing to uh, people. Uh, you know, at that time, move was way out there. Not just because they had locks and nobody had locks. There. It wasn't just because of that. 
It was that they was out there eating raw meat, flies and stuff was all over. They had dogs, all kinds of puppies and stuff and animals and all. Look. And then they constructed that bullhorn, and that's when all hell broke loose. And they was talking about free John Africa, free uh, Delray Africa, free. This this shit went on all 24-7. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Anyway, I, I just, I'm going to let it go right now. And I want some of my older uh, listeners, please make a comment. If y'all remember, some of y'all out there remember very well. Okay. Uh, let me hear your opinion. And, and I'll see you in the next video. Please like and, and share the video. Okay. Uh, that would be very much appreciated. All you got to do is hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the don't like button. But just participate, okay? Let me know you're out there. Okay. And I'll see you in the next.